All right, so we're back looking at uh, parameterized curves. And what we're thinking about is a, a circle of some radius r that's rolling along the x-axis. So here we have our circle. Um, and currently, it's already rolled some distance OR. So it's, it's rolled the distance OR. And if we think about um, that distance OR, the distance OR is the same distance as PR. So in other words, um, this distance here that it's rolled is going to be the same as this distance here that it's rolled. And convince yourself of that. I mean, you know, re-roll this um, backwards, and you'll be convinced that when you re-roll it backwards, the point P would start at uh, the origin. So what, we, what we'd like to do is we want to measure um, the position of P. We want to find the position P for any angle theta that the circle has rolled through. So for example, uh, right now it's rolled through an angle of theta um, right there. And, and given the angle theta that it's rolled, we want to understand, we want to know P's position. So um, if we think about it in the x direction, if we have this distance OR, uh, and then we subtract away uh, this distance QC, that will get me to the correct distance to P right there in the x direction. So this, this distance right here, um, OR minus QC, that's this distance right there. And in the y direction, well, the y direction we've got um, this, uh, let's, what marker should I use? Let's see. Uh, you've got RC, which is this length here, and that's just the, um, the radius, plus PQ, and that's this distance right there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to think about how we can express uh, each of these OR and QC, RC and PQ uh, in terms of theta. And, and we're going to do that now. Let's first think about the distance um, of OR. Uh, we, we know that OR, this distance, ooh, let's see. We know that this distance OR, that distance must also equal PR. And we, and we talked about that already. Um, so how do I find, um, how do I find PR? Well, PR is, if I have a circle, uh, and P and R, and I know that this is angle theta, the way that I find PR, well, um, I just do theta over 2 pi times 2 pi r, um, and that that is the way in which you can calculate the arc length of a circle swept out by angle theta. And this equals theta r. So we know that OR, which is PR, equals theta times r, my radius r. Uh, so I found one of those signs. Uh, and what about QC? Well, this angle in here, that angle there is theta minus pi over 2. And so QC, which I'm looking for right here, using geometry, we know that QC would equal r times cos of that, so r times cos of theta minus pi over 2. And I'm, gonna, I'm going kind of quickly through this because this is just geometry. But if you need some time, just pause it and you could convince yourself to this. Um, that's what QC is. What QP is, or PQ, QP is r times sine of theta minus pi over 2. Uh, so I found. That's that. 
I found QP that. And the last thing, RC, well, uh, RC is just R. So therefore, um, we can express X as, well, we know that X is this total distance. And let's, let's start, let's erase some of this so we can start over. We know that X is OR, which is R theta, minus QC, which is that value there. And my R value is R plus that, which is this. So um, simplifying this, cosine, we know that cosine of theta minus pi over 2 equals sine of theta. And sine of theta minus pi over 2 equals cos of theta. So we can, we can switch. Let's see. We can switch these here. That's going to become sine of theta. And that's going to become cos of theta. And, if, and we can pull out r's in both of these, and, and we can get the following. And that is a, um, the parametric equation. And so just to see what that looks like, let's let r equal 1. And so that's what I've done here. Uh, I've let r equal 1. And I'm looking at this. And, and the shape is sort of what we would expect. P starts at uh, the ground. And then forever, its x value is getting further away. But here we're at our max y, which is 2r. Uh, and now we're back to the ground, and we're at a distance of 2 pi r away. And it's going to keep bumping up like that cyclically, and that's called a cycloid. Um, okay, so that's just an example of, of some interesting geometry to get us to a, a parametric equation. Now let's let's think about derivatives in parametric equations. Well, uh, to start us thinking, you know, what if I had dy dt over dx dt divided by dx dt? What would this get us? Well, I mean, it's sort of illegal math what we're doing, but if we do this, the dt's are going to cross off, and what we're left with is just dy dx. So, you know, if we know that x is f prime of t, dx dt then would be f prime, and dy dt would be g prime. So how would I find dy dx? Well, to find dy dx, dy dx just is f prime over, sorry, not f prime, g prime over f prime. It's my dy dt over my dx dt. So if I, you know, if I am given this example problem here, and I know that x equals cos t, well, then x prime equals negative sine t, and y prime equals cos t, and those are x prime and y prime in terms of t. So then dy dx is going to be cos of t over negative sine t, or negative cotangent of t. And that's this is dy dx. So it's how y is changing in terms of x. Notice, though, that it's in terms of my my answer is in terms of t. So that's taking the derivative. Just take the derivative of y with respect to t, x with respect to t, and then find their quotient. So uh, it says find the points at which dy dx does not exist for the curve defined parametrically by x equals secant theta, y equals tan theta. So let's let's go forth and you know find dx dt which is, well, if you don't know what secant theta is off the top of your head, and this should be dx d theta, uh, we could think of that as cosine theta to the negative 1. We want to take the derivative of that. So d 
d theta of that is negative 1 times cosine to negative 2 of theta times the derivative of the inside, which is negative sine theta. Simplifying that, we get dx d theta equals sine theta over cos squared theta. And d d theta of y equals sec squared of theta. So we know dy d theta equals secant squared of theta. So to find dy dx, well, dy dx equals dy d theta over dx d theta, and that is sec squared, which I'm going to write as 1 over cosine squared of theta over sine of theta over cos squared theta. So before I simplify, notice that my domain um, dy dx theta, for this one, theta cannot be um, what's going to make cosine 0, uh, because then we'd be doing 1 over 0. So it can't be, well, what makes cosine 0? Uh, pi over 2 plus k pi. And for dx dt, theta, again, can't be cosine squared, because that would make the denominator 0. So it can't be pi over 2 plus k pi. But then when we do some simplifying, we get dy dx equals 1 over sine theta. And so theta cannot be 0 plus k pi. And combining all of these domain restrictions, because we're looking for when dy dx does not exist, if we combine all those, we get theta cannot be equal to 0 plus k pi or pi over 2 plus k pi, which we could write more succinctly as theta cannot be 0 plus k times pi over 2. Because these are values that will either make dx d theta, dy d theta, or dy dx. Uh, those are values of theta that would be dividing by 0, which we can't do. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the video now, and, and we'll have a couple more questions for the third video. Uh, stay with this. Uh, it's easy. Just I'm giving you a lot of content right now. Uh, let the content sink in, um, and then we'll, we'll do a lot of practice. But we're going to have uh, one more video tonight uh, where we do this problem and a couple others. All right, so um, instead of finding the slope, I want to find the tangent line to the cycloid at theta equals pi over 2. So if you want to, I would say pause this video and then, and then uh, do it and then check with me uh, or just watch and follow along. So we know that x at pi over 2 is going to be equal pi over 2 minus sine of pi over 2, which equals pi over 2 minus 1. And we know that y of pi over 2 is going to equal 1 minus cos of pi over 2, which equals 1. So we've got my our x, y point. Now we just need to find the slope. Well, you know that x prime equals 1 minus cos of theta, and y prime equals negative, well, positive sine of theta. So my derivative function then would be um, Let's see, dy dx equals sine theta over 1 minus cos.
cos of theta, where theta equals pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 over 1 minus cos of pi over 2 works out really nicely. This has a slope of 1. So therefore, my tangent line is going to be y equals 1 for my slope, x minus pi over 2 minus 1, and then plus 1. That's the tangent line. And last thing, uh, second derivative. So the second derivative is just the derivative of the derivative. Uh, and we just need to be careful when we do this. Uh, and, and here's why. Um, we know that dy dx equals dy dt over dx dt. And it's a value in terms of t. So if I were to take the derivative of that, so the derivative with respect to x of of the following. So we want to take the derivative with respect to x of this. But we need to sort of do it, uh, we need to sort of do it in two steps. Um, it's, let me erase this. Um, it's the derivative of the, of this. It's going to be derivative of dy dx with respect to time all over the derivative of x with respect to time. That's what d squared y dx squared is going to equal. And so to do that, um, you're going to need to twice differentiate uh, y and then di divide by the first derivative of x. Let me, uh, let's see what that looks like. So um, if we look at this function, you know that x prime equals 1 minus cos theta, y prime equals sine theta, but if I want to find the second derivative, um, d squared y dx squared, that's going to be the derivative of this. It's going to be the derivative with respect to time of, and it should be, this should be theta, uh, of sine theta all over dx d theta, the change in x with respect to theta. Uh, and this equals cosine theta over dx d theta, which is 1 minus cos theta. Uh, I imagine there may be a question or two on this, but we'll, um, we'll definitely do a ton of practice on this over the next couple of days. All right, so that's it.